You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. Oh, there's a lot of rubbish in the truck today. I've been doing work as always. Uh, what's up? It's another, well, it's another Ask Camp Cannon question. And uh, you know what that means. I answer one of your questions from our Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter and get your question asked right here on the channel, go to patreon.com slash Camp Cannon. Now, today's question, those are elongated tortoises basking, by the way. Today's question comes from Dylan Cloud, and he plans on building an outdoor enclosure for his redfoot tortoise. We are in my redfoot tortoise enclosure. Uh, he asks me, uh, I'm planning on building this enclosure. Is it okay to use cinder blocks like Bob Bloom's place out there in Arizona? Uh, you guys remember Bob Bloom. He has the enormous collection of sulcatas, galops, uh, many different species of tortoises, and he uses cinder block for everything. Well, here I've used wood to make a wood fence. The uh, other part of the question that Dylan asks is, will these guys dig out? So is that okay if he uses cinder block? Will they dig out? So here goes the answer, bud. Uh, redfoot tortoises don't really dig much. Um, these guys will make little pallets, which I can show you over here as they're all coming over to swarm me. Uh, they make what's called a pallet. Um, so basically, oh, they're not really digging. They're just kind of burrowing down. You see how they've made this depression right here? So they'll go ahead and they'll kind of burrow down. Here's another one over there uh, up against the cinder block or concrete bunker that we have. Uh, so they'll just kind of nestle down for the nighttime uh, and get themselves comfy. Uh, here's a little female walking through the bamboo. Um, very cool. But you'll notice that I used what's called corral board for this. I stained it to, to help uh, protect it against the weather. Of course, it's pressure treated wood. Um, this one goes into the ground a little bit. And then what I've done is dug a trench and I sunk another one of these boards completely in the ground. I like to be careful. Better safe than sorry. Now for the cinder block wall, Depending on where you live, uh, you may want to put a concrete footing in if you're really going to go the proper route and, you know, lay a foundation for that cinder block wall. Uh, here in Florida, uh, you don't really need to do too much because it doesn't freeze. However, you know, if I were you, I would uh, put some kind of um, stabilizing foundation for the cinder block. Uh, these guys aren't as powerful as sulcatas or Galapagos tortoises. So you really don't need to be too worried about them pushing it over. I don't know if you plan on mortaring the uh, cinder block together. Look at these guys nibbling on me. They must be hungry. Uh, they're always hungry and never full, my tortoises. Um, but you know what? Uh, as far as mortaring it down, oh, hello. How you doing? How about I bring you over here? Oh, goodness gracious. There you go, sweet pea. All right, she was kind of uh, on the wrong side of the tracks there. Sometimes they will pop on over. Uh, where was I? Yeah, I was talking about the cinder block wall. Now, uh, to do it properly, you're going to want to put some kind of foundation down. Uh, Bob doesn't do that. Uh, he likes to be able to move his block around and therefore uh, it's kind of modular. He can change it as he wants. Um, but you'll notice that sometimes the tortoises dig, the sulcatas will dig up against it and they collapse. So to uh, remedy that, you're really gonna need to actually have a foundation, a cement foundation, and then put your uh, cinder block on top of that and then mortar it together. Uh, Bob doesn't do that, he just throws it up. It works for him, he doesn't mind every once in a while having to deal with a collapsing uh, burrow underneath the cinder block. Um, what I've done here with my buddy Mark Collette from Autistic Stone is I've actually used old sidewalk, okay, uh, that we had sunk in the ground. Now, these pieces of sidewalk, they go into the ground about a foot. Uh, some of them go about two foot in. Um, they are not cemented together except here in the water dish. The, the water dish cement has kind of bled over. Um, I like this look. It's a free material. You may be able to find these chunks of concrete. They are not easy to work with, guys. They're extremely heavy, but they stay when you put them in, especially for tortoises like the redfoot tortoise. I even like how some of them lean. They're kind of leaning over. They're giving it a really 
kind of Fred Flintstone, primitive modern Stone Age family look. Um, again, I used wood over there for the mountain and elongated tortoises. Uh, and as you can see, my redfoots are really uh, coming after me. It's a turtle attack. Let's go look at some of the other enclosures that I have here at the camp to give you a better idea of some of the materials I used or actually some of the tortoises that are in fact, uh, you know, living in those enclosures. Again, here's some more of this free material I use. This is running almost the entire front of the property, which is, uh, it was a lot of work, guys. We had a big machine come in uh, with a backhoe and we put all this stuff in. Now, this is the Aldabra and Galapagos tortoise enclosure. And it makes sense to use a stronger uh, construction material when you're dealing with larger tortoises, doesn't it? So very important for uh, tortoises that can reach upwards of 300 pounds. Here, everyone is. Oh, there they are. What's up, guys? You haven't been on the channel for a little while. There's Socrates, there's Nostradamus, and then that beautiful creature right out there. Bam! There is my girl, Darwin. What's up, sweet pea? I think I'm going to feed everybody here today. They're going to get their treat. But um, if you look, again, I've used this cement. Uh, old sidewalk, it's been sunk in. Now, you can use cinder block, but you're going to need to mortar it because the tortoises are powerful. Uh, Galapagos and Aldabras are just big. You're talking to tortoises if they're males can reach close to 600 pounds. The female's about 350, 400 pounds. Here's Darwin right now. But you'll also see behind her, I used a normal farm fence, but I reinforced that fence with this, oh, I guess it's two by 12. Okay, so that's really strong. They don't really push against this wire. Believe it or not, if they wanted to, they could go through this. Uh, here in Florida, metal wire rots out at the ground because our soil is very acidic. So it rusts really quick, uh, corrodes fast, but you can see that I reinforced this entire length with the two by four, uh, excuse me, uh, two by 12. Uh, very important. Uh, I have two enclosures here. One is their summer enclosure, which I open up so that they have this whole thicket as well as this section. And in the winter, they only stay in this section because it's easier for me to get them to their heated shelters. Um, so you can see also guys that even this, when I had these guys put the fence in years ago, I had them countersink another board so that the tortoises, uh, cannot dig out. It was a labor intensive job, cost me a pretty penny. That was before I was doing all the work myself, but it is completely worth it because we want to keep these animals in the enclosure safe and sound. How you doing Nostradamus? I love you. Isn't he getting big everybody? Look at how big he's getting. And there are socks, of course. Hi, socks. What are you going to do? You're going to bite the camera? Oh, you're a lunatic. Uh, let's go see the final enclosure that I wanted to share with you. It's the leopard tortoises. Now, the tortoises that I've shown you do not really dig. Like we learned about with the redfoots, they basically make a little pallet. Uh, the last tortoises are the leopards. We're going to show you them. Uh, they don't really dig much either, which is why they make a very good... Uh, choice if you want a really cool tortoise that gets sort of big, but it also uh, won't rearrange your backyard <laughs> like the sulcatus. So here we go, moving on over to the leopard tortoise enclosure. I did some uh, reconfiguring here. Uh, this used to be a separate enclosure, but I've opened it up now. The leopards can use it. This is their watering hole. Uh, you can see the leopard tortoise enclosure as it once was. We got some grass grown back in it, but I ripped out the fence yesterday that actually dissected this between the two pastures. I figured, you know what, man? I don't like looking at that fence. It was getting old. It's time now to open things up. So I opened it all up, okay? And there's the guys there just uh, kind of hanging out by the pylons here in the shade because it's getting really warm right now. But this particular enclosure has pylons, which I sank, okay? And that separates, it, it actually contains the elongated tortoises and the pond turtles here, the fly rivers and the badiger. Uh, from the outside world and also keeps, of course, the leopards from going in there. Uh, but you'll notice just a few different ideas on how to contain your tortoises. 
Uh, I like the corral board. It's not rough on their shells. Sometimes the concrete, if the tortoises are walking along the sides, can really grind up their shells. Um, so watch out for that. Here's a leopard tortoise right now having a bit of a graze, which is always cool to see. And of course, there's my girl. This is the friendliest little radiated tortoise you'll ever meet because, oh my God, she's always running over to me. Hi, girl. All right, so Dylan, I hope I've answered your question. I would say make a foundation. Uh, if you absolutely can't, no worries. Uh, I think it'll be okay if you're down someplace warm where it doesn't freeze and you're not worried about the ground shifting. Just stack your cinder block. The red foot should be fine. Uh, eventually, though, to do it right, you're going to want to have some kind of fixed fence to where no one can move it or knock it down or anything like that. So I use corral board, it's easier on the tortoises, but I use actually, to be perfectly honest, I use a lot of materials as we've seen in this video. All right, everybody's just relaxing here. It's time for me to go shoot a few more videos. I hope you enjoyed this Ask Camp Ken, a little bit of a lengthy one, but I figured it was worth it. Uh, so if you're dealing with medium-sized tortoises that do not dig, uh, then you can be a little bit more lax on your fencing. That being said, always countersink a little bit, a few inches to make sure that they will not come out because these guys over here, bam, they are the real diggers, the good old sulcata tortoises. Hi guys, how you doing over there? Okay, fantastic. Uh, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit like and don't forget to subscribe. Go on over to the Camp Kennan Army and subscribe there as well because that's how you're going to be able to upload your own videos to show off just how well you're taking care of your animals. And go on over to patreon.com slash Camp Kennan where you can become a Patreon supporter and potentially get a question answered here on the channel like I just did for Dylan. Uh, if you are feeling uh, extra stylish and you want a Camp Kennan t-shirt, go on over to campkennan.com slash store get your Camp Ken t-shirt there as well. Thank you guys for the support. I will talk to you very soon. New video coming out uh, tomorrow. Oof, 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 a lot happening. See you guys later.